mass shootings and a mom's call for action. The recent tragedies in Wisconsin and Colorado and Connecticut have left us all searching for answers. And for one local mom, it's a sign that we need to start having a serious talk about mental illness. And tonight, Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson talks to that mom and her son, her son who's actually battling bipolar disorder. Brian's here with this. Yeah, Brad and Ann, one of the first questions many people ask when a young man goes on a shooting rampage, where were the parents? Well, Heidi Yoakum wants you to know she's right here and she's doing everything she can to help her son. But she believes our mental health care system is better at reacting to violence than preventing it. The ability to pull off gravity defying stunts on a BMX bike takes more than just physical skill, it takes a special state of mind. Take your fears and take your doubts, switch them off. Mike Hinkins is a professional freestyle rider, but he knows an amateur who can flip that better than anyone. It's just mainly jumping off stuff. Ron Yoakum is a street rider with a fearless and aggressive style that once landed him on the pages of Ride BMX magazine. The caption describes him as a madman. That was my passion as a child. But lately, Ron's passion for riding has waned as he battles a mental illness. In the last maybe four or five years, um, he just kind of disappeared from the scene. Where's Ron? <laughs> We're missing Ron. Yoakum recently organized a jam in Estabrook Park, a sort of BMX riders tailgate party. Ron, where are you at? He organized it, then decided not to go. Still, it's, it's a great passion of mine. Now it's switched to keyboarding. During his most recent stay at the Milwaukee Mental Health Complex, Ron says he learned how to play the piano without a lesson. It just happened. Whatever flows through my fingers, not even what comes into my head, what's flowing through my fingers. So it just comes to you? It just comes to me. He even convinced a local piano bar to let him play one night. That's hurt my hand. Until the owner cut him off. It went great. It's chaotic. His mom says it's just the latest in a long series of delusions. It's like what's going on in his mind is coming through in the music. Bipolar disorder is not something most people are eager to talk about, but Heidi Yoakum felt compelled to share her son's story. After a string of mass shootings left the country shell-shocked. In all these stories, there's just what alerts me to it is a common trend of mental illness. As is often the case, Heidi's son showed no signs of having a bipolar disorder until his teens. He's just really happy. He's in Boy Scouts, you know, just a usual kid. It was after he graduated from high school that Ron's erratic behavior began. One day in 2006, he got in his car and started driving. I thought I was being awarded $93 billion to help the Katrina victims. He just drove till he ran out of gas. He ended up near Monroe, Wisconsin, where he walked into a stranger's house in search of the Holy Grail. There was a girl inside, and she ran away, and she hid, and I left the house, and I was walking down the driveway, and I was just like, Oh my God, I, I just re I realized kind of what, what I was doing. I just entered someone's house and I scared a girl. The Greene County Sheriff recommended that Ron be placed on a Chapter 51 commitment, his first ever stay in a mental hospital. It was as if someone just either took a fist or a giant club and just smacked me right in the chest. Ron was given a powerful cocktail of antipsychotic medications, but after he was released, he stopped taking them. One year later, he tried to kill himself with a butcher knife. I took a knife to my throat and I did it three times, just like this. Once again, Ron was committed, medicated, and released. It's like a revolving door with the hospital and court, back out, back in, back out. And uh, that's what's so exhausting. Heidi says the mental health care system is confusing and alienating, especially to the parents of an adult. It's fine if we can keep him here. We're like, okay, Ron, here are your meds. And he's just going along like a little soldier and doing what he should. But he's like, no, I feel okay. Most of the time when they gave him to me, I stopped right away because I was either a zombie or zonked out the entire time, just super tired. That's a really tough 
area is how do you get somebody treatment if they don't want it. Peter Huffel says treatment is effective and it's crucial to managing an illness of the brain. He's executive director of the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Greater Milwaukee. Heart disease untreated, bad outcome. Diabetes untreated, bad outcome. Cancer untreated, bad outcome. Mental illnesses untreated, oftentimes lead to bad outcomes. But Huffel says one of the greatest barriers to treatment is the stigma. They're nuts, kooks, you hear whack jobs all the time. Who wants to be considered crazy, psycho, a lunatic, a nut job? It's just not regarded as a real illness. In fact, Heidi says the only time she's ever been able to get her son treatment is after something bad happens. I just heard a loud bang and I was just, oh my God, I thought he took the car through the front of the house. In 2009, Ron drove circles around his parents' yard in Kewaskum, honking the horn and demanding to be let inside. He eventually got out and kicked down the front door. For me to knock down that door was, was like, like taking down a kingdom. He was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, but later found not guilty by reason of mental disease. Once again, he was committed and released. There comes a time where you have to go to another level. Heidi isn't sure what to do for her son. He's once again showing signs of delusions and he's living unsupervised in the South Side apartment. It's not that she thinks Ron will commit a violent crime, but her point is there are always warning signs. Someone does, does not become mentally ill and do that out of the blue. From the shooting of Arizona Congresswoman Gabby Giffords to the theater rampage in Colorado, the Sick Temple shooting at Oak Creek, and the massacre of children in Connecticut, mental illness is finally on America's priority list. I'm glad people are talking about mental health care. But to Huffle, the increased attention is a double-edged sword. People with mental illness are no more likely than the general population to commit a violent crime. In fact, Peter Huffle and Heidi Yoakum have opposing views about why these mass shootings are occurring. The only common denominator in these school shootings are, I mean, mass shootings, is a gun. It's not guns. <laughs> that's, that's not the problem. The problem is the person behind the gun. But they agree that the mental health care system needs improvement. And it's incidentally, so does Ron. When you have people shooting up schools, our mental health system is not good enough. That right there tells you that our mental health situation in, in, in this country and around the world is not good enough. Earlier this month, Governor Walker announced nearly $30 million worth of proposals aimed at improving mental health care in the Badger State. That includes more than $10 million to expand community-based care programs for people just like Ron Yoakum. Milwaukee County Executive Chris Avely hopes to use some of that money to get long-term patients out of the county's embattled mental health complex and into community care. Well, as for Ron, you said he has his own apartment. Is he totally alone or does he get any kind of assistance? Well, he did tell me that he's getting some assistance from Transitional Living Services. It's a nonprofit organization that helps people in the situation. They take them grocery shopping, offer other, other kinds of supportive services. But by and large, he really is on his own, and he says he wants it that way. He says he's taking his meds now because the doctors have finally found the right mix, and he's finding a purpose through his faith. Still, his mom is concerned, especially with some of the delusional thinking that he's been having lately and some of the things that have happened in the past. You know, and so many times we've heard when things happen, it's <clears throat> when someone has gone off their meds and um, yeah. they just become unglued. And that's the tough spot for her is how do you make sure that he's taking them. Right. Wow. For her and so many others, sure, as you absolutely. point out. Thank you, Brian, so much. Really right. thought-provoking. Wow. Okay, well, how safe are you when you go to church in Milwaukee?